In this video, I am talking about 14 money habits that everyone needs to master by the time that they reach their mid-30s so that they can have a financially secure future going forward. And this is a culmination of everything that I have personally learned as a non-finance person about making money, saving it, investing it in the last decade. So. Let's get started. Number one is working on your money mindset. Now, this is the single most important thing that you can do for your financial future, because when it comes to dealing with money, everything, and I mean everything, boils down to your mindset. How you make money, how much of it you make, how you save, how you invest, everything boils down to your core concepts, your core beliefs around money. And if you have grown up in a middle-class Indian household like I have, most people have a very scarcity-related mindset around money. We are afraid of money. We are afraid of losing money. We are afraid of making money. We don't know what to do with money when it comes to us. And we keep following the traditional advice that is given to us because we want it to be safe. But improving your money mindset means moving more towards an abundance mindset, understanding the fundamentals of money and making it work for you rather than continuously you working for money. A few resources that you should definitely, definitely check out when it comes to improving your money mindset is these books that I have listed here, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, The Psychology of Money and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, three of my top books when it comes to changing your mindset about money. The second thing you should be doing is closing the learning gap that has been created by the schooling system. Now, we learn a lot of skills when we're in school, a lot of life skills, a lot of work skills, but what we don't learn is financial skills. And this sets us back so much when we actually start making money because we don't know what to do with the money that we are making. And we actually don't know how to make more of the money that we're making. So this step should be of prime importance as soon as you start making money or even before it to figure out how the economy works, how salaries work, how the taxation system works, how you can invest your money to make the most of it, how you can save on taxes. All of this is information that is widely publicly available and it does not take a very long time to learn. So make sure you're investing time in learning how money works and how to make it work for you. The third thing you should be doing is focusing on making more money as opposed to saving more money in your initial years of working. What this means is investing time, effort, energy and money in learning high income skills that can give you a higher ROI as you grow older. A lot of the traditional investing saving advice tells you that as soon as you start making money, you should save X amount and you should invest X amount. And But when you're at the beginning, at the start of your career, you are not making enough money to be able to put into all of these different buckets. I know that when I started making money, I started with a salary of 20,000 rupees and it was barely enough to cover my expenses. I did not know how to save that money. I did not know how to invest that money because there was no money left to save and invest. So to bridge that gap, I started freelancing and the money that I got from freelancing is what I started putting in my savings funds, in my investing funds. And that also took a lot of time for me to figure out. The reason for this is because I was focusing on the traditional advice of just saving and investing without actually learning how to make more money. As opposed to that, if you start focusing on making more money, on diversifying your income, on learning more high income skills, you will see that that affects compounds. And by the time that you're in your 30s, you're making a lot more money. And that gives you so much more room, so much more leeway to actually save for your goals, for your dreams, for your expenses. Number four, and this is kind of related to the third point, is to value practicality when it comes to making money. Nowadays, we see a lot of BS around finding your passion and finding your purpose, and that is all well and good, but your purpose and your passion are constantly evolving cohorts. They continue to change throughout life. There is no such thing as one passion, one purpose. So when you spend a lot of time trying to figure out what to do, you are stuck in this limbo space where you are constantly planning, overthinking, overanalyzing, but not taking action. And when you're not taking action, what it does is that, that increases the gap between your current skill set and your goal or your ambition. A way around this is actually rapid experimentation. Keep trying new things, keep doing new things, keep trying new things that make you more money. The faster that you experiment, the faster you learn that something doesn't work for you, the faster you can move on to things that are actually working for you. And while doing this, you are not sitting and wasting time. You are gaining skills, you are making money and you are securing your financial future while also working towards finding your passion if that's what you want to do. Number five is paying yourself 
first. Now, this was a concept that I got introduced to in Rich Dad Poor Dad, where Robert Kiyosaki talks about this habit and this mindset of the rich of paying themselves first. As middle class Indian kids, this is a very alien concept. And I never understood the importance of it until I started doing it. When you pay yourself first, you are telling your mind, telling your brain that your time matters. It is your hard work that has led to this money and that you deserve to get paid. So treating it like an expense. So if your work, your job is like a business, you treat this as a salary that you pay to yourself. And that is so, so important. And once you start doing that, you will see that your entire mindset around the money that you make shifts a lot. Number six is to learn how to save. When I initially started making money, I had no concept of saving. Well, my expenses were a lot and I wasn't earning a lot. So that was one part of the equation. But the other part of the equation was that I never had the habit of saving. And what that does is it puts you in a very negative money cycle. You keep spending, you might accumulate credit card debt and you never end up saving because you are stuck in a very negative cycle where you're just spending more than you are making. So that is not what you want to do. Uh, this is the reason that so many financial gurus, everybody talks about learning how to save because you need to build that habit. You need to train your mind and you need to physically do it in order to be able to save more when you're making more. Number seven, and this is going to be a controversial one, my friends, is to date and then eventually marry people who have a good mindset around money and who are financially stable or at least have like the backbone or the structure of being financially stable when they are making enough money. For most people, for most people in life, your partner is somebody that you're going to spend the most amount of your adult life with. And if they are not on the same page as you when it comes to money, when it comes to making money, saving, investing, whatever, it can cause a lot of friction. Actually, I think there are studies that show that the number one reason for conflict between couples is money. And if you are not with somebody who matches the ideology and who believes in saving and investing and making more money, it can become not just a point of contention, but it can make you become bad with your money as well. And that is a slippery slope to go down on. And this is true for both men and women, especially now that women are also earning. Both partners should focus on building their money mindset and then either helping their partners grow their own money mindset and habits or choosing partners in the first place that already have that structure in place. Number eight, money out equals money in. This is a difficult concept to understand, especially in middle class Indian households where all we want to do is save money for a rainy day. But you need to understand that economy, businesses, everything works on flow. Unless they spend money, they can't make more money. For example, let's say it's a restaurant. Unless they spend money on ingredients, on the rent for the space that they have, on chefs, on waiters, etc. They can't serve their customers. They can't create the food that they want to create. And then if they're not able to do that, they're not earning back money. That's a very simple example, but it applies to everything in life. Let's say you want to start making 4x or 5x more than your current income in your job. The easiest way to do that is to upskill, to learn a niche skill that the majority of the population doesn't know. But to learn that skill, you will need to invest your time and your money. That is why people do MBAs. That is why they pay for MBAs to be able to get higher packages later on. So this concept of spending money to be able to make more money in the future is a very, very rational one. It's just people don't look at it that way. Whether it's upskilling, whether it is subscribing to the right AI tools that help make your job easier, whether it is paying someone to do the work that takes up massive amounts of your time, but does not take up as much in income. I, for example, can pay video editors to edit my videos. I can pay writers to help me write my newsletter and I can use the time that is saved up from there to do better research to get more content out for you guys and grow my personal brand. So these are just examples and Naval Ravikant talks about this very well in the Almanac of Naval Ravikant where he talks about setting an hourly rate for yourself. This is a relatively new concept in the Indian space because we don't do hourly rates here. This is just to understand how you value your time, like at what amount you value your time. And if you can outsource work at less than your hourly rate, you should do that because that will allow you to free up time to do things that are having more of an impact on your income. Number nine, stop giving in to FOMO and lifestyle inflation. So much of the money that we spend on a regular basis is because of keeping up appearances. We want to look a certain way. We want other people to perceive us a certain way. We don't want to feel left behind as compared to our friends. And a lot of those things are not actually necessary for our growth, for our 
survival for our happiness. And what doing this does is basically makes us spend so much money on unnecessary things that are not impacting our life in any way, shape or form, except for maybe our own self-perception and concept. This is also true for lifestyle inflation because when we start making more money, we feel that we have to keep up these appearances. We have to have a bigger car, a bigger house, better interiors, whatever it might be to portray the fact that we are making X amount of money. But all this does is makes you spend unnecessary amounts of money on keeping up with a lifestyle that is not sustainable. And considering that FOMO is never ending, especially in the social media age, this is the fastest way to put yourself in a bad money cycle. Number 10 is to prioritize your spending. And this is one of my favorite habits that I have built over the last decade. Now, this means that you are allowed to spend money on whatever you want. You're earning so that you can spend it on the things that you want. But why you need to prioritize is because you can't spend on everything. Like we discussed in the point above, just spending on lifestyle inflation is the fastest way to get into a bad money cycle. And you don't want to do that, but you still want to enjoy the things that you enjoy. Maybe it's fashion, maybe it's travel, maybe it's expensive handbags, whatever it is, prioritize and then save and invest your money in a way that allows you to spend on the thing that you enjoy the most and cut back on spending in other areas. So for example, a person who loves to travel will prioritize in such a way that they're able to make a trip every month. That, for instance, is not my priority. My priority is investing in better camera gear, for example, or investing in things that help me make better content or help me make my house more aesthetic. And those are the priorities for me. So I will move my money around in such a way that I'm able to spend my maximum amount here. And if I don't have money left for, let's say, a trip, I don't end up feeling bad about it. Prioritizing in this way allows you to have fun with your money. It allows you to have freedom with your money without feeling guilty for spending on things that other people might find unnecessary. Because there's a lot of financial coaches, a lot of financial gurus out there who will tell you to cut back on your Starbucks and stop spending money on a trip every month or going out to eat in restaurants every month. But if that is something that you enjoy and you prioritize for spending on that while cutting back on other areas, you are golden. Number 11, don't be afraid of discussing your salary and your packages, especially with your colleagues. Now, this is not a means to show off or to hear what the other person is making and feel bad about yourself. Not discussing our salaries, keeping hush hush about the money we make is actually a scheme that was invented by corporates so that people would stay mum and they could continue paying lesser wages to their employees. The only person that benefits from non-transparency in discussing your packages, your salary, the money that you're making is the organization itself. You are always at a disadvantage if you are not discussing how much you're making, especially with your colleagues. And I learned this the hard way when I was doing a full-time job and I applied for this position Another colleague of mine applied for the same position and he got a much higher raise than I did. And once I went and then confronted the organization about this said raise, they actually leveled out our packages. So discussing your salary, discussing how much you're making with your colleagues especially helps you understand what is a fair rate of pay, what other people are getting paid, are you getting paid more or less. It allows you to also understand the value of your time and your work in a particular organization. I, for example, am a content creator, so I talk to other content creators about how much they're charging for a brand deal or how much money they're making in a year. And that also allows me to understand how to go about my own journey as a creator. Of course, there's a lot of show off and we want to avoid that, but discussing this is more from a transparency perspective and that only stands to benefit you. Number 12, find a way to get to your goal. What this means is having a solution focused mindset rather than just giving up in the face of the first problem you come across. When you look at it from a money perspective, let's say you have a goal to make X amount of money in one financial year and you are doing a full time job. So you go ahead and you ask your boss for a raise but your boss says that that is not in their budget, that is not something that they can do. Now, in one scenario, you can either give up and resign and just say, okay, well, if they can't do it, they can't do it. I'm gonna continue working the way things are. The second thing that you can do is you can search for other jobs and look for a raise in another job and get a higher paying job with another company, client, whatever, right? The third thing you can do is Start figuring out ways that will help you make that money beyond your conventional job. So maybe you could start a side hustle. I have a friend, for example, who works a full time nine to five corporate job, but he wants to make more money on the side. So he's taken up consulting gigs where he spends half an hour a day after coming back from office, coaching people on how to crack 
entrance exams for MBA colleges. The scope is extremely vast and often you have multiple ways of getting to your goals. We often just have a very myopic view of looking at things and what that does is that we give up in the face of failure. But you know what they say about when you have a goal and you're not able to reach that goal, change the plan, not the goal. And that is very, very important when it comes to making money as well. Whatever goal you have, whatever goal you have for your financial year, for your financial future, figure out multiple ways to get to that goal rather than just relying on one thing. Because when you do that, not only will your money mindset improve, you will also get to your goals a lot faster. Number 13 is to start where you are. I used to be that person who used to complain about not starting investing when I was 20 and when I actually started making money and starting it very, very late in life. And just the other day, I was complaining about it to a friend and I said, my God, if I'd started investing at 20 instead of like at 27, 28, like I would have had so much more money right now. And that friend like hit me on the <laughs> head and was like, bro, that's a very slippery slope to go down on because we are all prisoners of our circumstances. It takes a lot of hard work to get out of your current circumstances, to get out of your mindset. And that means that wherever you are starting in life, wherever you are in life and at whatever point you're starting, that is a good place to start. It's very, very important to remember. So let's say you are 30 years old and you have never invested a penny in your life or you've never saved up any sort of money in your life and you want to start right now. One way to look at this would be, hey, I'm 30, I'll start right now. I will have enough saved up till 40. The other way to look at this is, well, I'm 30, I haven't saved up till now what is the point of saving up in the future? People will tell you that you need to start saving at 20, at 18, some people will say, right? For somebody who starts doing that, great. Although I will again say that in your initial years of making money, focus on making more money rather than saving more money because just doing the second thing, focusing on improving your high income skills actually compounds a lot more in the future as compared to just saving smaller amounts on a regular basis, right? But if you're not able to start saving at 18, there were hundreds of things that, you know, led to this factor where you are now 30 and you're now starting to save. That's absolutely, completely all right. Wherever you start is the best place to start. And number 14, remember that you will pay the prices of your own choice, whether you choose to make money, whether you choose to be a stay at home mom, whether you choose to invest money, whether you choose to not invest your money, whether you choose to spend on travel, whether you choose to spend on home decor, Whatever you choose to do with your money, you are the one who has to bear the results. So always keep that in mind whenever you are making any decision in life and especially related to money. Are you willing to pay the price of your choices? If the answer is yes, go ahead and take that decision. If the answer is no, you know that you need to rectify whatever you're doing right now. So those were the 14 money habits to master before you're 35. You guys asked for more videos on career success and money. So this is the first one in the series. I'm actually going to start calling these some sort of series and I will probably ask you guys for name suggestions. So meanwhile, go check out this video next and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.